Um, the purpose here was twofold. The one was was to, from the board perspective, from the for the board to um, all of us to to explain our position here as far as what we see and what we envision as the most important aspects of um, of Central Middle School and clarify that for the community since there is so much debate and discussion about that. Um, and then the second the second aspect of this this PowerPoint is really to help set the parameters and the guide for just that that subcommittee work that we're going to be talking about at the special meeting, um, really such that we have the priorities clear when we're looking at revising the ed specs. So the the next slide here, which is something we will not go into detail, um, lays out some of the history of the project back from the facilities master plan through the ed specs, uh, originally being uh, derived uh, voted on in August. Um, and then the architectural dispute that we spent a lot of time discussing last month. Um, the next slide um, shows uh, a comparison of kind of, of what the different plans, um, um, where the different plans are. So on the left-hand side, obviously, you see the current central middle school, the building we're currently in. That was 110,000 square feet, 31 classrooms, six science labs. This is obviously available on board docs and is, is public for, for all to see. The ed specs as approved, uh, the ed specs as approved last August by the board um, increased to 115, 30 classrooms, six science labs, and the full auditorium. Um, the decisions that we're currently for, uh, looking at uh, stem largely from the revisions that the Central Middle School Building Committee made uh, last month. Um, they are recommending changes to the ed specs, uh, increasing to 125,000 square feet, 30 classrooms, six science labs, um, uh, effectively halving the um, and effectively halving the size of this space, the auditorium. Um, much has the discussion around the ed specs, if we can go to the next next slide here, is around capacity. And you see this again, the 660 student number has been discussed at length across town. So we thought, um, uh, our working group, we thought it makes sense to take a couple of minutes to define what we mean by capacity. Um, so in simplest terms, uh, because middle school capacity is different than an elementary school capacity, and it's important for um, all of us in the community to realize that. In simplest terms, if this was an elementary school, it's a very simple calculation. Now, there are other complicated calculations, and if you look at square footage and things like that in the facilities master plan, but for our purposes, you know, you take the number of classrooms, you times that by the number of students, and you get a capacity. In an elementary school classroom, that would make a lot of sense. Um, it doesn't, as you see on the next slide, make uh, make 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 that sense in the middle school. In the middle school, because middle schools are not programmed by individual classroom, but are programmed by teams, they, uh, that is a range. That number is a range and it could be up to 660 students, they, uh, but, uh, but often less likes. And there are some parameters on that, which we talk about um, and try to explain on the next few slides. So the most important aspect of the ed spec, uh, from my opinion, and the reason why we have to be so careful about the ed specs is the preser preservation of the team model. Um, what is a team? So the teams, obviously the team in a middle school, um, everyone on a sixth grade um, has the same team that has the same, if, if, if you're a teacher, if, excuse me, if you're a student in sixth grade, um, you're a student of a cohort of up to 110 students, and you all share the same student, the same teachers, such that the math teacher, the ELA teacher, English language arts, social studies, and science um, all share the same similar cadre of students. That's extraordinarily important in middle school, which for reasons uh, spelled out in detail um, on the next slide. Um, what um, everybody who has taught or everybody who has, uh, if we can go to the next slide real quick, they, um, every, for anyone who has taught or certainly anyone who has raised a middle school or knows, uh, middle school is a very complicated age range and shrinking the school down, shrinking down the, the number of adults and making those, those relationships meaningful between who the student uh, uh, works with is incredibly important. And that's why we have a team model. It is why in the middle of the last century, as a country, we moved away from junior highs and moved to middle schools. 
middle schools are just that. The difference between a junior high and a middle school is very much a, is very much in the team model. Michael, I don't know if you can go to the next slide. Um, there, there we go. Thank you. The uh, middle schools are very much synonymous with uh, team structures, um, and you'll see their links to um, a lot of the research and the summary of research of the middle school movement in the 20th century that brought the team to that. Before that, a junior high was just that. It was a junior version of the high school. And we realized a long time ago that moving students, uh, treating a seventh grader like an 11th grader, where they go all around the building from class to class to class, doesn't work very well. That's why we try to shrink it down. Um, much more recently, the middle level education, the Association for Middle Level Education released a summary now in its fifth edition, saying teaming is the heart of a middle school philosophy. They, um, even as early as late as 2018, Hanover Research commissioned a, a report for Connecticut saying that teaming is a uh, champion is the most efficient way to organize middle education. Um, it's the gold standard for middle schools. That's why it's so important, the ed specs. Building a building a new central middle school that can't support the team model would be uh, as effective as building an 80-yard football field. It is simply not worth it. They, um, and that's why the team model is, is so important. Um, however, ha yes, and that means and that means looking at and that means considering the spaces a different way in different ways. Um, so how is a team model? And this is a complicated slide that people can study at their leisure. But you see here, this is kind of how a middle school is a simple way of how a middle school is programmed. Um, so period one, you see the different classes. In our model, remember there are two English language art classes. So the shaded version is the shaded version of that is where the kids are, and the white square is empty. That's important for reasons that we'll talk about at our special meetings and why we might be able to shrink the square footage a little bit because that not every classroom is used every period in the team model. The, um, um, there are five classrooms used at any one time, give or take. Now, there are some others because classes break out and there's tracking and things like that. But in general, there is, uh, there are some, there are some, there is a little bit of space. But basically, in order to have a team, you need those classrooms. Uh, one team of 100, which could could fit under our contractual per, uh, uh, limits up to 110 students. Um, that on the next slide gives a sense of what capacity means. So at that 660 uh, number, uh, mythical enrollment number of someday, sometime in the future, um, um, the, the, we could fit 110 students per team they um that's a class of size of 22. They um you need um those many classrooms on the team in order to cla cla physical classrooms um to have a 22 class size. Now there's been a lot of talk in the community about declining enrollment. The state number projected number in the next eight years is 511. That would be a class size on a team of 17. They, um, at one point in the future, there's a projection of us going as low as 450 students at Central Middle School. That would mean class sizes under the two team per grade model, which is what we have, of 15 per student, of, uh, of 15. Obviously, it doesn't work out that way. There's going to be uneven numbers and things like that. Um, obviously, 15 is small. So that says, well, can we have efficiencies here? Or can we shrink that? Can we go to one team or something like that? The answer is no, we can't. And this is the problem that we face here with designing Central Middle School. You see that on the next slide. Because if we go to a one team model, the numbers simply get too big. The, um, if you only have one team on sixth grade, one team on seventh grade, and one team on eighth grade, um, obviously at 660, you're looking at classes of 44. But at uh, 450 students, that low number, we're still looking at a class size of 30 which obviously is untenable. Um, it's not acceptable to the community. It's too large for our class size guidelines and it's outside of teacher contractual limits. Um, why talk about all this? Because I think it's important for us to realize what we, when we talk about the range here, the um, building a school around teams, and you'll see that on the next slide, building the middle school, uh, building the middle school around teams uh, uh, mandates a certain number of classes. Um, the, uh, it is essential for a high-performing middle school. 
Um, however, the new the um, that's that's the number one thing. If you look at all the research, there is no one out there who will argue that you can have a middle school without team. It's just not worth it. Um, but number two here, the um, the new CMS. The other conclusion here is we have to have a two team structure. The um, if unless you're going to 330 students in the middle school and no projection is that we need to have two teams and that requires a certain number of classrooms, probably at least 28. Um, but we're going to talk about that on Monday. Um, the um, and then the third conclusion here, the two team per grade structure requires building enough classrooms for a range of students up to 660. The bottom line, which is the final the final point here on the next slide. Thank you, my. So on the, the next slide. Suspension. Oh, one more. There we go. Thank you. So the bottom line, the uh, the team model is extraordinarily efficient from an educational perspective. It is inefficient on a square footage basis. That's the trade off that we as a board are 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 believing in. The, that we believe strongly that that trade off is worth it. We're going to need more classrooms to make the team model work, and that might require some inefficiencies. To inefficiencies. And our job, the job of the working group, and the job that we're going to be talking about at the special meeting is where we might be able to find other places in the building outside of classrooms to maintain the team model, but find other efficiencies to uh, control the ultimate square footage of the building and make it make it make it cost effective.